Today, the Youth Cafe is mapping the needs of young men and women at the continent, at national and local levels, and preparing to even achieve greater impact through its work and in collaboration with its diverse partners. And in this, we are asking certain fundamental questions that would make the organization achieve its objectives. For example, how can we promote youth-led accountability, enhance pro prosperity and social justice while engaging with crucial institutions in key conversations that eventually shape policies, as well as reduce the intergenerational inequality that is prevalent today. We are also asking through this plan, how can we better leverage on innovation and the youth creativity and harness our international network of partners that we have cultivated over time as well as our own expertise in terms of orchestrating complex partnerships and collaborations that deliver results and span various sectors such as government, the private sector, civil society, and the young people themselves, either through them as individual participants or through their networks and coalitions. We are also asking, how can we reach better marginalized groups of young people and work towards closing the digital divide? divide? How can we bridge the societal divides and prioritize the gender agenda? And how must we position the Youth Cafe to build on as well as capitalize on our own hard-won expertise in youth-led development and manage to thrive in an ecosystem that is increasingly growing complex. Through this strategy, it is our humble hope that we will be guided as an organization and all our members and partners as we address some of these questions. In other words, it is our guiding light. And all this will be enabling us to advance youth-led approaches that are meant towards achieving sustainable development, an era of social equity, finding pathways to youth-led innovation, community resilience, and transformative change. At the Youth Cafe, we believe that the inputs that we've got in order to frame this strategy would be important in terms of having an inclusion, in, 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 inclusive plan that doesn't leave any young person behind and help us to facilitate uh, the increased impact that we already begin to see within our work at regional, country, and local levels, and indeed, even at the international levels. We want to build the agency of young people, as well as advance their rights in all their diversity across the African region. We also hope to ensure uh, the active engagement and participation of young people in all stages of development, right from implementation, review, and follow up of particularly sustainable development 
activities that affect their communities. I think our plan finds a lot of re relevance among many young men and women who we have consulted at particularly local levels in order to uh, frame a robust agenda to lead us to the year 2023. By the year 2023, the Youth Cafe, based on the feedback and input we've got from young people themselves, will focus on eight thematic areas of work. And these eight areas include arts and culture and sports. We already have young people who are our members actively engaged in this field. We will work to increase the contribution of this sector to socioeconomic stability at local levels in terms of promoting sustainable development and economic growth through harnessing the power of cultural entrepreneurship, as it were. We will also focus on an area of work related to peace and security. And in this field, we'll work to achieve positive contributions through the active engagement and participation of young people in terms of maintaining a culture of peace, as well as promoting their participation at, in terms of international peace and security. The third area of work that we have identified to focus on in our plan is that of governance and political inclusion that is centered on accountability. And in this area of work, we would want to see an increase in advocacy for political stability and effective governance that can help ensure that there is transparent, democratic, and accountable governance systems within our communities that will enable young people to thrive in an environment that is non-discriminatory. Non we will also uh, focus on governance, still political inclusion, with a focus on remittances, with the aim of mobilizing domestic resources that can help us chart a path uh, locally led youth-centered paths towards in eradicating the high levels of poverty that we, we witness among our youth members. The fifth area of work that we have identified through the strategic plan is that of environment and climate change. This is an urgent issue of our time and young people are taking frontline roles in terms of ensuring that we have improvements in life and lifestyles of young people that uh, increasingly rely on green jobs, for example, solar energy for small uh, youth-led businesses and opportunities for skill training in the renewable, particularly. Uh, sector. In addition, we will, we've identified education and skills as a crucial area to focus on in this plan. And in this aspect, we will work to increase the access to efficient, high quality education and training systems that can enhance the facilitation of young people's access to education and their integration into particularly seamless integration into the job market between uh, education to uh, the labor market. The seventh area that we've identified is that of jobs, business and entrepreneurship. And in this area, 
we would work, want to work to increase training and mentorship opportunities for young people, as well as to leverage and create uh, self-employment and job uh, opportunities for a vast uh, suite of young people who lack jobs and access to opportunities. And last but not least, we will focus on universal health uh, coverage reform for young people with particular biases towards increasing access to quality, affordable, responsive, and youth-friendly and adolescent uh, sexual health reproductive rights and services. These ladies and gentlemen will form the organizing framework of our plan, which together working with you as our partners, but also holding us to higher levels of accountability to ensure that we are on track to work on these on this fields. In, in the last uh, aspect of health, we would want to also work towards embracing gender equality norms uh, as we see the disproportionate manner in which young men and women face different um, uh, health vulnerabilities. We know that our plan is ambitious, but it is also appropriate and commensurate uh, to the scale of the challenge at hand. And it is therefore an opportunity for us to make a difference. We realize that executing this strategy will require extensive partnerships, new and old, as well as new resources. That is why I believe that through your support, we can, through this plan, open the door to unparalleled multiplier effect as our massive message, our work, and our efforts spread. And in that process, ensure that the next generation of African leaders receive the tools and the resources they need in order to take the region's biggest problems. Thank you so much for blessing the occasion. Thank you so much for that incredibly informative overview, Willis. We will now be sharing a link to the Padlet and request you all to please share your thoughts and feedback by clicking on the add comment button under each question. And I would like to request my colleague Stacy to please read out those reviews. All right, uh, I've posted the, the link in the chat. So feel free to click on the link and um, add your opinions in the Padlet. Amazing, I can see Anonymous uh, giving us a comment about the 2D animated video and they said it was well done. Thank you so much for that amazing comment. Um, I can also see Felin Morocco um, you saw yourself there. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Feline. Um, I can also see Cynthia on Twitter. She said she, it's great and she really loved the 2D video. I can also see Anonymous saying that it was amazing. Another it was amazing comment. Well, thank you so much, guys, for the um, wonderful comments. Um, I can also see Anonymous saying it was very good. I also see other comments on other questions. Um, what resonates with you in our strategic plan? I can see Anonymous saying it was inclusive and um, you know, it, it, it includes youth. Thank you so much. Um, I also see a comment on 
the which other areas do you feel the youth cafe should prioritize on um somebody says skills development oh thank you so much for that um that's a, a very constructive comment i also see anonymous saying that uh what they feel that the youth cafe should uh, prioritize on is partnerships and collaboration with county and national government. Thank you so much for that comment. Um, I also see mental health. Thank you so much. Um, we'll actually take that into consideration. I can also see uh, comments on the question uh, of um, any question you have about our strategic plan. I see Anonymous saying it's very enlightening. Thank you so much. Um, I also see somebody else saying it's self it's self-explanatory and it's a nice presentation. I also see Anonymous saying that it's great to hear the Youth Cafe is taking initiative in investing in the youth through sustainable programs. Thank you so much for that really uh, wonderful comment. Um, I also see this uh, this question, are there areas of, co of collaboration you've identified? I see Anonymous uh, talking about entrepreneurship development. Yes, we'll actually need to take that into co uh, consideration. That's something we've been thinking of co uh, doing a collaboration on. I also see youth and employment opportunities. Thank you so much for that. We definitely uh, have a collaboration on that. Um, what other areas do you feel TYC should prioritize on? I see supporting young innovation. Yes, uh, we we'll definitely do that. I can also see comments, so many comments on any question you have about our strategic plan. Uh, I see the anonymous talking about the, priori the priority areas seem to be many for a three-year strategic plan. How do you plan to cover all those areas and achieve what you have planned? Um, those are questions that shall be answered uh, at the end of the video. Thank you so much for that question. Um, yes, yes, yes. I also see uh, somebody else talking about any question you have about our strategic plan. I see somebody saying it's directive and enhances better and enhances better creativity. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much, guys, for chatting us up on the Padlet. Uh, you have, uh, we thank you so much for the question. And any questions that you've asked, we'll be sure to answer them. Thank you so much for that. Well, great. Thank you guys so much for your feedback and your questions. Uh, we will be relaying them to the appropriate people. Um, so yes, moving on. Indeed, this plan is ambitious, but it's also appropriate to the scale of the impact that we're trying to make. It will require us to summon our strengths and continue to learn and adapt in order to support the young people that we are so dedicated to serve and live up to the youth-led principles that we embrace. Due to the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, we all saw the adverse effects the pandemic had on young men and women. As such, an example of the work that the Youth Cafe has done is that we partnered to provide unconditional cash transfers to cushion the effects on marginalized youth that we work with in the slum areas of Nairobi. We recently spoke to some of the beneficiaries and this is what they had to say. Good afternoon, my name is Felin Maroko, your host for the Youth Cafe. Uh, today we're going to be meeting a few of the beneficiaries that received the unconditional COVID cash transfers. Among them today is Maureen, and we'll be speaking to her in a few minutes. She'll give us her experience. I'll be asking her a few questions to get to know exactly how the experience was like. Thank you very much. Welcome again, Maureen, to the Youth Cafe. Tell us a bit more about yourself. Thank you. I'm Maureen Mwangi. Mm -hmm. I volunteered at the Youth Cafe and I benefited from the unconditional cash transfer. Yes. I'm also a student of broadcast journalism yes. at Kenya Institute of Mass Communication. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Maureen. And um, how exactly did you benefit from the unconditional COVID cash transfers as a virtue of being a member of the Youth Cafe? They helped me, especially that during the, when the, we had so much economic hardships in the country, it helped me with my family to buy basic needs and also being a time when we started online classes mm -hmm. i used the money to buy data to attend the online classes thank you thank you experience receiving the cash transfers uh, the cash transfer helped me to ease the stress 
that came with COVID-19 with the hardships accompanied by the restrictions given by the government and the Ministry of Health. Um, and would you say that the cash transfer, how in, how has the cash transfer helped you to push on the effects of the pandemic? Uh, the, ca the cash transfer helped me, uh, that being a time where many people became depressed, not knowing what to do, because mm -hmm. many people lost their employment, so we had to stop going to school. Mm -hmm. That money helped me mm -hmm. to do the necessary things that no one, anyone else couldn't do without money. Yes. Very true. How are you, my dear? I'm very fine. Uh, you. Tell us your name, please. Uh, my name is Jerita McKenna. Jerita, uh, welcome. Thank you so much. And could you just tell us how did you benefit uh, from the COVID-19 cash transfers as by virtue of being a member of the Youth Cafe? Uh, well, I really benefited from it because uh, at that time, the COVID-19 really strike hard. So, like, uh, a lot of people were struggling, and me being still in school, mm -hmm. uh, it at least enabled me to kind of uh, sort a few things. Okay. So, yeah, I think it really helped me positively. Yeah. Okay. And um, how has the, like, how ha exactly has, can you just define how exactly has the cash transfer helped to cushion the effects of the pandemic? Uh, well, I'd say it's mostly the basic needs because um, uh, the amount we received was it was just enough to cater for just a few things like food and probably let's say like um, paying for the Wi-Fi or bundles to attend my my classes online. Okay. So at least I was able to feed myself mm -hmm. or and also attend my classes. Yeah. Oh, that's great questions or feedback they may have with regards to the program apart from that? Well, I don't have any questions, but I'd really love to say thank you okay. to Youth Cafe for uh, being there for us and thinking about the youth in the slums mostly, mm -hmm. because people have been struggling for real, so we, I would just love to say thank you. Wow, thank mm -hmm. you so much too, uh, Rita McKenna, for joining us today. Thank you. We do appreciate your feedback, and we hope to see you again in the future as well. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, my name is Feline Maroko, again your host. Uh, thank you. Uh very well. Uh, we're so humbled and happy to see that young people are using these funds to learn and to take care of their basic needs. These are just a few of the beneficiaries from over 200,000 young people who received this COVID relief fund support over the past four months. I would now like to introduce our next speaker, May Maloba. Madam Maloba is a board member at the Youth Cafe. She is the country director of Global Health Innovations and is an experienced program manager, leader, scientist, and nurse currently enrolled for the PhD nursing philosophy program, pursuing health system strengthening. We are honored to have her as a board member as she spearheads our programs under the thematic area of universal health coverage. Madam Aloba, the stage is yours. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for hosting us. Thank you for hosting everyone, because this is very important. Um, uh, I will not go to my introduction and uh, uh, Willis has said everything. But anyway, um, important to note that Youth Cafe 2021-2023 uh, strategic plan highlights um, key challenges uh, in, in, in try it tries to address the Sorry, I had challenges with my internet. So the Youth Cafe 2021-2023 strategic plan highlights key changes uh, through theory of change, therein addressing adolescent challenges. And I like the fact that um, they have already started implementing it. One, in terms of uh, when they started, uh, they, they do the activities. I've sat in many of the activities. And one of the things they do is uh, they recognize that uh, youth's um, uh, youth, uh, uh, proposals, the plans, when they, 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 they get a procurement plan, they People they will get um, uh, those proposals or they will win are also youths. And we can even see women uh, because youths are very innocent at home. 
Um, one of the things I'm really, really impressed with is uh, how they know that, yes, this is our agenda. They are very innovative and creative, but they always sat, sit back. And right now you can see how many partners are here, just trying to listen to them, understanding them. They do not do things on their own. They always uh, seek advice and they want to, they, they, in Kiswahili they say, uh, no, the, the people who, um, you know, who are older know more than the, the younger. So they respect that, that the older generation have uh, quite skills and experience to where they are right now. So we have a blending of the young, the old, and also the, the middle age. So that means even if, they are even if our strategic plan is very ambitious, they are looking towards uh, how they can integrate and uh, strengthen referral and linkages in terms of research and training. And I think this is uh, what is going to get us there. Support, commitment, hard work, passion. Um, and many people will look at uh, where do we invest? And I'm telling you, if you invest in Youth Cafe, I think we will just, uh, because it's, it's, it's going uh, East Africa, many people are going to benefit from it. Um, my uh, area of talk today was mental health, COVID, and um, uh, COVID, and, and and how you know we can strategize that. So the plan actually offers a very effective and cost-effective uh, framework that moves forward uh, the agenda of uh, the youth, and it actually uh, gives us a reflection process in terms of sharing, learning, and reflection. There are many activities that cannot be said now, but I've, I've, I've just managed to look at how they conduct the activities. And I feel like um, they're giving us a best foot forward. Uh, it's also uh, important for us to remind ourselves at, as partners um, how and where they started from. You know, sometimes we, uh, even parents, you know, we start from a, a family, we go to community, and then we go to um, uh, the globally and uh, even nationally. So uh, me as a parent, sometimes I also forget that, you know, my, my, my child is transitioning from childhood to uh, adolescent and then uh, adulthood. And I get so many, I get so frustrated because I'm like, he never used to be that before. And uh, looking and flipping up as a professional, it is important to remind ourselves that adolescent are not young we made that uh, uh, we made that uh, that that pro we, we made that mistake uh, when we were starting our HIV care and treatment and we realized we forgot our youth because this is when we are looking at priority population we were only uh, targeting the the adolescent and we were also targeting the pregnant women forgetting the youths but we came to realize when we were doing um, our, stack, uh, our st stock tech, uh, how this has uh, really impacted uh, us and where our priority population are. We said, and uh, this is uh, when uh, WHO came uh, with the prioritization of adolescent, because now we, we saw that um, the, the number of adolescents are actually becoming, uh, more of them are becoming uh, uh, pregnant and more of them are actually giving us high positivity rates. And we said, uh, where did we wrong, go wrong? And that's why you, 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 you'll see around 2014, 2015, uh, adolescent friendly services coming up. Uh, you will see employment of uh, young doctors just trying to combat this particular crisis, similar to COVID. So when COVID, uh, COVID has been, uh, uh, became a crisis, and this is uh, now where we, we started struggling, you know? Uh, we started struggling with mental health. We started struggling with uh, um, uh, teenage pregnancy. We started struggling with, with drugs addiction. And um, right now, I, 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 I feel like the strategic plan that we have and what they have started doing, I think it's making sense because we just want uh, empowerment. And what they have done in terms of um, uh, combating this uh, as their strategic plan is to look at uh, strengthening linkages and referrals. So all the centers, all the people working for the youth centers, they have actually uh, have all numbers regarding uh, all health facilities uh, where people can be able to be assisted. So anyone calling in, they, that is what they are doing. That moving forward, 
they're thinking of having their own call centers. They even uh, thought of, uh, you know, networking with uh, secondary schools and universities. And I think this has been a very uh, good uh, strategic plan network. Uh, to talk about HIV, uh, we all know uh, how the youth have been affected. The youth actually serves like it's a 60% of population. They're growing up. So in a previously, we've been having um, a, a, a prevention of maternal child health, uh, prevention of maternal uh, uh, HIV. Uh, and you can see the people who are now leading are those people, uh, adolescents who were younger then, and right now they're adolescents. And they have done, they are champions right now. They have done so well in terms of uh, ensuring that preventions take place and co-activities uh, co in all these prevention services. And the Youth Cafe have also uh, integrated that nicely so that when uh, people, uh, you know, the champions are out there, um, people calling in to find out how they can get empowered or people are in crisis. This is the information already they have and they are moving the agenda forward. So I think, um, yes, it is ambitious plan. When people are looking and reviewing it, uh, we all agreed that it is an ambition plan. But um, uh, we also agree that when you have an ambition plan, you can be able to get many people collectively with commitment, they will come together and be able to um, move the agenda forward. And this is something that I think, I feel like uh, he has a very good, uh, you know, approach personally, interpersonal relationship, and even the, the team, the way they work together. It is how, you know, you can talk to this person and this person can refer you to someone where they can be able to get, uh, you know, many partners to work and achieve more. Like for us, uh, they approached us. And one of the things that we want to help them, them with is training the core team uh, in terms of doing research and uh, even you know, moving ahead, uh, looking at other countries, what have they adapted and how can we replicate the same here in Kenya? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Madam Maloba for that enlightening speech and such kind words. We feel so blessed to have you as our board member. At the Youth Cafe, we pride ourselves in having a youth-led expertise. This is why we work with over 4,500 interns and volunteers globally on various programs. Let us now watch a video of what some of our interns and volunteers have to say about their experience working with us. Hello everyone, my name is Shumaida Fenigini. I'm from Zimbabwe. I'm a final year international business and trade student at the African Leadership University, Rwanda campus. I've interned with the Youth Cafe for a couple of months and my internship experience has been a good learning curve and it was fun. It allowed me to grow personally and professionally. It also gave me an opportunity to practically apply what I've learned in class and to establish its relevance to the real world. What I liked most about the Youth Cafe is that the organization attends and hosts a lot of youth activities and events, which gives their interns an opportunity to, um, to meet different youth and discuss various cross-cutting issues in Africa. I've had a chance to attend a number of events and one of my favorite events was the Learning Planet, which was a plenary session with the Director General of UNESCO and different youth movements. Uh, the goal of this event was to invite youth organizations and movements to create their own events in the community tracking for the celebration of the International Day of Education. My biggest takeaway from this event was from the Youth by Youth organization. I liked how they are supporting different youth education uh, by gathering a number of young people to discuss various topics on education and how they are encouraging youths to have a sense of agency on their education and also to stand for their rights so that they can be heard. Thank you. Thank you so much. At the Youth Cafe, we believe very strongly that given the opportunity, 
Youth in Africa and around the world have the potential to make a remarkable difference. I would now like to introduce two young leaders, an intern and a volunteer who work with us and are here today, Anthony Karanja and Binti Zani. Anthony is a project research and development intern at TYC. Anthony is also a passionate entrepreneur and a serial investor. He believes that businesses have the solution that Africa needs. And in his own words, he says, I am Africa and Africa is my business. Binti Zani is a volunteer at TYC. Binti is a third year student at the University of Nairobi, and she's currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in nutrition and dietetics. Binti is a young leader and passionate about youth empowerment and development. Welcome, Anthony and Binti. It's a pleasure to talk to you today. My first question is to you, Anthony. Could you please tell us about how you were involved with the Youth Cafe and elaborate a little on the projects that you worked on? Okay, uh, it seems Anthony has some uh, connection issues, that's okay. Well, then I'll ask uh, my question to Binti. Having recently celebrated Africa Day, there is great emphasis on arts and culture in development. What does it mean to you to be an empowered African youth? Thank you so much for the question. For me, when I hear the word empowerment, the first thing that comes to my mind is the word power in the word empowerment. The power to be able to take charge of my own life, the authority to be able to implement, in my, to implement change in my life, and the ability to be able to make informed decisions, not only for myself, for a better life for myself, but to also impact other youth as well. Having recently celebrated the African Day with a great emphasis on art, culture, and heritage as levers that we could use towards building the Africa we want. I will define empowerment as the ability to recognize the vast opportunities that are there in the cultural and creative industry, how the cultural and creative industry ultimately contributes to the economies in our various nations, and how we can take advantage of these opportunities to ensure that we better our lives. It is also in recognizing the it is also in recognizing how this cultural and creative industry has had a big impact towards helping us, especially during the pandemic. We can look at how we've been able to share various forms of information through the various media outlets, how we've been able to support each other despite the differences in the geographical areas, and how through creativity our youth have been able to come up with various initiatives and ideas that we could implement and use these ideas was solving various problems that we have in our various nations. So simply for me, being an empowered African youth means embracing my heritage, being comfortable in my own skin as an African, and being able to take advantage of the vast opportunities that lie in embracing my heritage and use these opportunities not only to better my life, but to better the other life, the, the lives of other youth as well, and together contribute to a more sustainable world. Wow. Thank you so much for those inspiring and empowering words. Another question to you is, um, based on your answer, how do you see our programs promoting uh, youth empowerment for, for the African youth today? Going deeper in into the idea of empowerment and looking at the various aspects of empowerment, such as skill development, looking at intellectual empowerment, empowerment, educational empowerment, the moral, social, and social and cultural aspects of empowerment. I would say that for me, the Youth Cafe is the perfect embodiment of youth empowerment. Why do I say this? Looking at the eight thematic areas of the Youth, empower, of the youth Cafe, looking at the four guiding principles as I also, uh, also mentioned in the strategic plan, looking at what we are doing today, marking a milestone of celebrating the strategic plan that can best, that can best be described as a plan that has the interest of our youth at heart. I think that the Youth Cafe is the epitome of youth empowerment. Looking at the various activities and initiatives, how the Youth Cafe supports our youth to implement the ideas, how the Youth Cafe puts our youth at the center of the decision making of any decisions they want to take regarding our youth, then I can confidently say that the Youth Cafe is an embodiment of youth empowerment. Thank you so much for your enthusiastic and invaluable opinions. I would like to apologize on behalf of Anthony as he was having some connection issues and will not be joining us today. Moving on, 
Um, we would love to introduce you to a protege. Stacy Fru is a South African multiple award winning, best selling author, internationally acclaimed public speaker, philanthropist, founder of the Stacy Fru Foundation, and an ambassador for the Youth Cafe. Let's hear what Stacy had to say about the positive youth development and how investing in the youth is the surest way of attaining sustainable development. I'd like to request for the video to be played. Hi, I am Stacy Fru. I'm an international multiple award-winning child author, activist, and philanthropist. I thank the Youth Cafe for letting me be a part of the 2021 to 2023 strategic planning launch. I understand positive youth development as a process whereby youth are fully involved in communities, projects, institutions, activities, governments, projects, and even family businesses to produce results and work towards common goals to empower and encourage each other to stay positive. I believe positive youth development builds personal and social development of young persons. Positive youth development can be led by older people as a way of encouraging, empowering their youth or by the youth themselves. I would say that for every young person being prepared to meet the challenges at school, home, society and the future workplace will help you be more positive. By virtue of active and constant engagement, I feel like the Youth Cafe program is shaping a lot of young youths with the immense help of youth leaders across the world. As an ambassador, I have learned a lot about youth development and I'm certain that the continent is better developing and would do so faster if the youth are involved. Well done to the Youth Cafe. That was truly remarkable. We're so honored to have Stacy as part of our team. The mission of the Youth Cafe is to promote youth empowerment in Africa, and we aspire to achieve that through this plan. Now I would like to introduce two of our vibrant staff whose roles are instrumental in attaining the fruition of the strategic plan. Caroline Kamal is the Senior Monitoring, Evaluation, Learning and, Ad and Adaptation Officer at the Youth Cafe and Cynthia Ontita is their Senior Project Research and Management Officer. I would like to warmly welcome the both of you. Since you're part of an incredible and resourceful team, I would like to get your takes on a few things. My first question is for you, Caroline. As a young person working at the Youth Cafe, how do you feel TYC invests in the youth? Um, I'm sorry, we can't hear you. I think you're mute. I'm sorry, Carolyn, we cannot hear you. Well, let me start uh, then ask Cynthia the question while, while you try to figure out the um, connection. Um, Cynthia, working at the Youth Cafe, how do you think TYC makes a difference? Thank you, Malika, for the question. Um, as a youth-led and youth-serving organization, the Youth Cafe uses different ways to be able to make a difference in the lives of young people. How do we do this? We are a unique youth initiative with a vast reach in Africa, working for the youth and with the youth um, to be able to ensure that the voices of the young people are heard by being part of our programs so that in the end, we are able to foster community resilience, propose innovative solutions, drive social progress and youth empowerment, and also get to inspire political change. As a mobilizing force, we work to ensure we achieve results in partnerships with the youth, private organizations, governments, international organizations, religious communities, United Nations, civil society groups, corporations, and foundations. We are also a catalytic action-driven initiative and a global bridge builder. 
Here, we get to implement and support innovative projects on the ground, bringing these youths closer to youth programming by engaging member states, regional, continental, and global organizations, and also opportunities that address issues relevant to African youth. We also act as a convener. By this, I mean, we get to facilitate inclusive, accessible, and empower digital and physical spaces for youth, including marginalized youth, and young through supporting and promoting structured mechanisms of engagement and feedback. Lastly, we as the Youth Cafe refer to ourselves as a creative amplifying laboratory. What do I mean by this? Here, we get to seek and advocate for and foster innovative, impactful, and progressive policies that promote youth participation and engagement at national, regional, and global levels. Over to you, Malika. Thank you so much, Cynthia, for that insight. Um, once again, I'd just like to request everyone to, to please mute yourselves while, while uh, we're in this discussion because then it proves to be very, um, it's interrupting. So please, can you just uh, mute yourselves? Thank you so much. Um, Caroline, can you, uh, are you back with us? I believe so. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you so much. Um, so my question was, as a young person working at the Youth Cafe, how do you feel that TYC invests in the youth? Uh, thank you, Malika. And um, just to mirror you, yeah, as a young person, a question on social investment is both a weighty and important question to ask. I mean, are, are organizations doing enough to safeguard young people's basic rights to food, health, uh, shelter, and other basic amenities? Uh, are we actually making sure that our efforts as youths are, are, are taking credit? Uh, we, are, we, are, we are giving credit to youth and a real voice is given to the young people we are engaging. Uh, thankfully, the Youth Cafe has positioned itself in four ways to ensure that youth investment is real. Firstly, uh, the Youth Cafe is having an enabling environment, has created a sustainable and effective enabling environment for education and work systems for young people such that they can be recognized and their rights and will are recognized as well. Uh, this enabling environment includes emphasis on soft skills such as critical thinking, time management, adaptability, which are all very, very important in today's work environment. The Youth Cafe is also helping to advance technologies that support young people's uh, creativity and innovativeness, uh, considering that young people should be trained for future jobs and not past work environments. Secondly, uh, the Youth Cafe involves uh, young people in all levels of decision making, and this circles back to addressing barriers and negative perceptions that are based on stereotypes. We, of, we often hear that young people are clueless, uh, young people are careless, uh, young people are erratic, and all these are not true, because while giving youth the power and voice in development, we are able to uphold our democracy and also increase uh, the chances of program success. Thirdly, the Youth Cafe partners with young people to build a better and more resilient world. Partnering with young people includes uh, responding to community challenges and particularly providing support to the most marginalized and vulnerable groups of young people. And here we are talking about culture, uh, minorities, uh, as well as hearing uh, visually and physically challenged persons. Lastly, the Youth Cafe frames our youth programs on a gender responsive right-based approach. And this implies that young people are right holders. The Youth Cafe recognizes that uh, unequal power relations and social inclusion exclusions uh, deny young people their human rights and often keep them in poverty. Youth should be given an opportunity to work with adults in development from the very beginning to the very end. We also understand that our gender roles and inequalities, <coughs> and we make an effort to encourage equal participation and fair distribution of all benefits. Indeed, the Youth Cafe is invested in ensuring youth survive, youth adapt, and they thrive and change the world today, while also transforming uh, the future. Thank you, over to you, Malika. Great, thank you so much. Um, a follow-up to that, you said that the Youth Cafe recognizes young people as right holders. Would you mind elaborating on that? 
Yeah, sure, Malika. I, I must say that we all need to recognize that youths, after all, are not just adults in the making. Youths are people whose current needs and rights, as well as experiences, must be taken seriously. Uh, human rights are fundamental privileges and conditions of freedom, which again are protected by law to which every human being is entitled to. Uh, human rights focus on individual, political, civil, spiritual, social, economic, and also cultural aspects of our lives. And these rights and freedoms include uh, food, water, education, health, human dignity, privacy, freedom of media, labor relations, consumers, consumer rights, as well as uh, rights to uh, privacy. And all these must be included, must be respected, and also considering all these rights in the aspects of people with disabilities, as well as all young members of society. Acknowledging young people as right holders, therefore, means that young people should be allowed to enjoy fully their fundamental rights and freedoms. It also involves increasing the ability and accountability of individuals and institutions who are responsible for respecting, protecting, and fulfilling those rights. Some of the challenges for young people in accessing our civil, political, social, economic, and cultural rights include limited participation in decision making and lack of access to basic needs and rights. So to fully participate in the lives of their communities, young people need to overcome multiple legal, social, economic, and cultural barriers, as well as discrimination. So in summary, what I mean by uh, young people as right holders is that youth should enjoy principles of dignity and non-discrimination. They should also understand and be able to claim their legal entitlements. Thank you, Malika. Great. Thank you so much for that explanation, Caroline. Um, it really makes so much more sense now. Um, finally, Cynthia, in your opinion, what makes the Youth Cafe unique? Uh, thank you, Malika, for the question. At the Youth Cafe, we get to incorporate youth-led expertise by ensuring that youth-led programs are opportunities created by youth or youth-centric organizations where these youths get to lead the planning, they get to lead the decision-making, the facilitation, reflection aspect, and evaluation on issues that matter to them and their communities. Sharing power and letting youth lead allowed, allows for youth empowerment and it increases youth engagement. It's for the youth, it should be by the youth, supported by adult allies. Our management structures at the Youth Cafe are very unique. What do I mean by this? They are customized to fit the needs of every project and deliver high quality, on budget, well executed programs with professionalism efficiency and integrity. The Youth Cafe continuously seeks to be able to improve these programs and we get to deliver the best to our beneficiaries. Doing this ensures that our work is satisfactory, all the goals are achieved and real impact is created. We have public-private partnerships at the Youth Cafe. These are representations of the support network that the Youth Cafe has in its advocacy work. These partnerships include partnerships with universities inside and outside Africa, partnerships with youth serving organizations and other international partners. Through these organizations, we get to offer these youth mentorships, connections, supports, and funds, which we believe are very necessary for us to be able to increase the relevance of the organization and also the work that we do for these youths. We have built meaningful collaborations created through coalitions and networks which align with our values. Other networks are also built through hundreds of volunteers and interns and other organizations inside and outside Africa that we get to work and interact with. The Youth Cafe has an engaged organizational membership consisting of thousands of youth-led and youth-serving organizations. For this, we work to increase this number to be able to propel our initiatives. Lastly, we are proud of our resources and particularly our personnel who ensure that projects and programs are at the forefront of what we do 
and the processes that we adopt are very much relevant. The Youth Cafe staff and the related partners all work together to actualize um, these novel flagship projects that are actually suitable to the place, the time, and the context. I must say, the sum total of all these parts is what makes us as the Youth Cafe very unique, and we get to deliver value to our beneficiaries, our partners, and our funders through holistic, empathetic, and youth-centered approaches to development and also a unique combination of essential traits. Thank you, Malika, and over to you. That's awesome. Thank you both so much for those insightful remarks. As we saw earlier, the Youth Cafe works in eight different thematic areas, which are peace and security, which includes preventing violent extremism, governance and political inclusion with, uh, with regards to remittances and accountability, culture, arts and sports, education and skills, business, job creation and entrepreneurship, universal health coverage, environmental preservation, and climate change. As such, we use talent in youth-friendly ways for our advocacy and dissemination purposes. The next video is a group of young talented artists from Kariobangi, whom we work with to create videos that convey the feelings and opinions of young people. This song is titled Vidyana Hawana Wera, which roughly translates to young people do not have jobs. Let's see what they have to say. There is a culture that has come in Kenya today called the Songkonization culture. And what is Songkonization? Songkonization is the acquisition of material wealth in ways that are unknown and unfathomable. And once they are so acquired, they are distributed with object abundance regardless to where they are going. Vijana wana wera, vijana wana wera, ma wera zilipe wa mafade la madu shade ma vijana wana wera, vijana wana wera, vijana wana wera, ma wera zilipe wa mafade la madu shade ma vijana wana wera. Yona bonga ni meji sunda kupiti na mabuda na taka ni tibonge kwa tinga ya kaka ufisa di choni kitu na tulu mtu ni yani jicheshi na tu pona ni masuti na gandi ati muzi ba do muzi na tu pere ba na suti ni juzi tu ni liku baya kura si ni juzi tu ni liku uzasura sayi kwa bands ni kita mu na tu piki ya mabuzi na ngozi menyo kaka ma angeli na joli. We elect thieves, we elect hyenas, and when our ships are lost, we wonder why. Vijana wana wera, vijana wana wera, ma wera zilipe wa mafade la madu wa shade ma vijana wana wera. Jina ni Dida Ski, ya ufisa dina ni fanya minali, ya tebunda ni basinga ni njini, ya nani, ya nataka kutitenge ya manji, ya masomo bado o, ali toka nilbi, la kupida kemi, ya story, ya na bado baloji, ya lipatanga sifuri kwa mamia, kumba lipitisho family ya kwa dirisha, corruption agency, ya nasi, ya na wika, na venye na tuguta na maliza, maskini anatupo kwa nyakiza, na giza, na pigwa, na nyima, na fichu kwa kisima, na pigwa, na sitima, na mana minakam, na kuja, ni meja wana kwa, Gas, mina gas, corruption, mina gas Na konda kui gas, na kurifasi ya vas Rest in peace, corruption, ime pass Vijana wana wera, vijana wana wera Ma wera zilipe wa mafade, la madu wa shade Ma vijana wana wera Vijana ni kubaki wakibaki, mantege wakishika tumamaki Wakoro wakilia walibaki, ma youth wana wera wana didi bila haki Gava yiti joo fanya haki, wakati mafadela wana dunga tumambonya na makake Kitu watu vitambi wakigula kule daki, bako za kucheza tunapesa wakitupa tumalaki Korapi inafanya minabonda ni kitema tusitaki, sipati wakati, anti korapi ya siwa pati Wakikata pesa katikati, umoja ni umoja na vijana tutangoja na ukuli tutangoja kama mutafanya just know that that is a house or a roof of some of something so wow yeah, um like i'm sorry can, can can you please mute yourselves again sorry just like to request that um thank you so much
Wow, that was very dynamic. Uh, music has the power to transport us and allow us to view the world from so many different perspectives. So thank you for the transformative experience. Executing this strategy will require extensive partnerships and new resources. With the support of our partners and stakeholders, both present here today and others, we are confident that we will achieve our ultimate goal. At the Youth Cafe, we are strong believers in the idea that progress is not possible without collaboration. On that note, I would like to introduce our distinguished panel, who are all our partners. We have Mr. James Karongo Kuria, Regional Program Officer for Youth Excel for International Research and Exchange Board, IREX. We have Dr. Emma Newport, Sustainability Research Program Fellow at the University of Sussex, and Farida Abdullah, Youth Co-worker at SOS Children's Village in Kenya. Thank you all very much for, for talking to us today. We know that we partner in different ways with all of you, and we would love to hear about your different partnerships and experiences working with the Youth Cafe. Um, I would like to start with you, Dr. Newport. Hello, um, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, join the group today. Um, I am a lecturer at the University of Sussex and uh, I've been working with uh, the Youth Cafe um, as a partner on a project on youth mental health. Um, we're scoping an intervention, um, so that means that we are exploring with the Youth Cafe um, and the young people connected to the Youth Cafe what kinds of uh, mental health support they would like to see delivered, um, particularly around uh, raising awareness, providing access to help and things like that. Um, my, my biggest takeaways from this partnership, uh, firstly, I can give the partner's perspective on the things that Cynthia was uh, describing as Cynthia is our um, project administrator. Um, I can certainly speak to the fact that um, there's been a, a professional and efficient relationship around uh, recruitment and uh, of interns and also recruitment of participants, um, of the communication channels set up, um, and also around uh, the ethics of data management um, and protecting people's uh, identities in their involvement with the project, um, and all of those mechanisms that are really necessary to deal with sensitive topics like uh, discussing mental health. Um, I think that the Youth Cafe is really ideally positioned to facilitate global academic research. Um, so uh, they can provide the mechanisms, uh, structures and human resources to recruit uh, participation um, and also to disseminate uh, findings with uh, broad communities, which is really important for impact and outreach in new research projects. And to give an example, um, we had aimed to get about 100 participants in a survey that we sent out on youth mental health and we had over 300 engagements and uh, over 260 completed questionnaires. Um, when we presented these findings to our, our global audiences, we received a feedback about how impressed uh, the range uh, of data that we've received, um, the volume of data that we've received in what is actually a very short six month project. Um, in fact, one of, uh, one of our global colleagues commented that uh, we'd received the amount of data that you'd expect in a two year project. So I think that that's something that is, it really speaks to the value of partnering um, between research institutes and uh, the Youth Cafe, um, and also that the structures are in place to facilitate that, and also that the technology is there as well. Um, so that's my perspective uh, on uh, how these partnerships can be really valuable um, and result in uh, important uh, discoveries um, that are formed collaboratively uh, and are disseminated um, through a wide uh, audience too. Thank you so much, Dr. Newport, for sharing your valuable experience with us. Um, I would now like to request Mr. Karongo to please share with us your, your views. Uh, thank you very much, Malika, and uh, for giving me this opportunity this afternoon uh, to share with the rest of the team about our partnership experience uh, with the Youth Cafe. I'd like to say that uh, Youth Cafe, the Youth Cafe is one of my favorite partners in the Youth Excel uh, Consortium. 
And this is because I can relate a lot, you know, to the experience of the Youth Cafe One being a youth-led organization, the activities that they do, and the, you know, they are living uh, what I call the real experience of a youth-led organization, right from the executive director to the staff, you know, that they have employed uh, to work with. And therefore, for me, that is very, very key because you'll find that most youth-led organizations, youth-led on, on paper, but you know, when it comes to the actual thing, then they are not, they are not youth-led. So for me, that's one of the key things uh, that stands out for me in our partnership experience with the Youth Cafe. The second thing is innovation. You know, the team there, you know, has a lot of innovative activities, innovative ideas. They do things differently. And they also have new ideas that, has, that have been given to them. So that you can also relate. Even when you look, when you look at the, the animated video, if you look at their strategic plan, really everything around them, there's a lot of innovation that comes to there. Number three, uh, they're also ready to give opportunities to young people. You know, look at the interns, look at the staff. You know, look at what the board members say that, you know, even for procurement, they are, they are out there looking to give opportunities to young people who have companies. So by virtue that they are ready and willing to give more opportunities, you know, to the young people, uh, you know, it's also very good. And, and lastly, about our partnership experience, you know, one of the activities that we're implementing are, are the implementation research activity, which is around, you know, media literacy and also ensuring that we do not have misinformation, you know, around politics as we had to all know that next year is a political year in, in Kenya. And therefore, looking at some of the activities we are doing with them, then the activities that are fitting in the current generation. You know, I'll say the activities are also very current. You know, they're not things that are, you know, way back, the things that, you know, are not relevant to the young people. And therefore, in anything that they do, they ensure that it's relevant for the young people. It makes sense. Young people are involved. If you look at the implementation research activity, right from the design of the handbook, the persona, you know, creation you know for the different uh, aspects uh, of, of the of the program of the program and the processes and therefore the young people at the heart of all the activities and therefore i would say it has been a very good you know experience working with the youth cafe team and i'm happy to be part of this look forward to you know continue working with you and seeing how even as you broaden your other you know areas in the strategic plan how we can work with you and therefore for me i'll say the youth cafe is a very good partner to partner with. thank you very much man Thank you so much for those kind words. And it's true, at the Youth Cafe, we do really strongly believe in work for the youth, by the youth, and we try to do our best in, at that. I would now like to ask uh, Madam Farida to please share your insights with us. Uh, is Madam Farida here with us? Yes, that's me. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Please, could you share some of your insight on um, the different ways that you have partnered with the Youth Cafe? Yeah. So thank you so much for inviting me here today. And uh, I'm looking forward uh, to see how we can actually strengthen the collaboration and partnership with Youth Cafe. My experience working with the Youth Cafe is that they have directly engaged my young people because I work with SOS Students Villages and uh, SOS Students Villages, uh, we have a section of the youth program. So basically my youth are working directly with Youth Cafe uh, at some point as members, but they have also uh, been engaged, they have engaged them with um, within a couple of projects for instance. I remember the first project they worked on with the youth directly was the, the media literacy uh, project where the young people were directly involved uh, because now what was happening was there was so much information and uh, young people sometimes are exposed to information and sometimes they perceive information and use it uh, sometimes was an issue. So this for me was a very nice project for young people. And uh, I, I really enjoyed working with, with Youth Cafe on this project. The other thing I think is that Youth Cafe, they, they, they normally do what other, other organizations don't do. You know, engaging young people directly in research, you know, is very important because sometimes what is happening is other organizations do the research and then you have an organization working with young people and then you actually, working with data that young people actually were not even part of. So for me, that direct engaging young people in research to be able to get 
evidence-based research, so, sorry, kind of solutions uh, is a very unique way of working with young people. And uh, the other project I remember very well that uh, young, my young people enjoyed working with so much uh, where I remember I also met Emma, nice to see you here on the platform, is the global lockdown events. I liked the way they engaged young people from, uh, you know, doing the basic desktop research to coming up with their own solutions and then uh, you know, engaging people so directly in as hosts, but also as um, what would I call it? But also as moderators, you know, and 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 with this kind of approach, it means that young people are able to own up the process, and therefore they were easily able to come up with solutions. And uh, do, because it was a time of COVID time, they able to share you know, the experiences, the struggles, the issues on this platform. Uh, and then again, it reminds me of the uniqueness of the Youth Cafe uh, uh, organization. Uh, the, they have a principle around inclusiveness and uh, diversity. That is why um, I'm saying that it's a unique way of working with young people because you know, it's from East Africa, we have young people in Africa, we have young people overseas. So these unique uh, experiences and learnings that people, young people share with each other, um, makes it, um, it, it means that young people then are able to come up with action plans that are actually uh, more, you know, viable, also more applicable. Um, the other way, perhaps what I could say working forward, moving forward uh, to make sure that the collaboration is even more stronger is that I, I look forward to working with the youth cafe in terms of uh, ensuring that we create more platforms, more spaces for young people to be able to engage more, but also because we look at young people as leaders, we need to start already engaging them in these spaces where they can be able to make uh, decisions uh, on politics, on economics, on some kind of uh, policies that actually are not uh, very, you know, youth, youth-like oriented kind of uh, policies so that we have young people uh, being part of the development of their own communities, their countries, but also uh, making a contribution to the 2030 vision uh, and then also the SDGs. So uh, I'm very excited to be here today and I look forward to hear from everyone. And uh, for me, I say congratulations to the youth cafe. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for uh, sharing all of you. Um, we, are, we really do feel blessed to have such meaningful partnerships with you all and the opportunities that they provide. Um, a follow-up to you all, um, how do you think the strategic plan uh, leads to the advancement of these partnerships that we have at the Youth Cafe? Um, I would like to start with, with you, Madam Farida. I am looking at, I like the, because already I think the strategic plan is something the Youth Cafe had already started most of the, the objectives. But for me, I'm looking at the youth cafe uh, and the soul students villages working more together uh, and planning together because sometimes you don't just want to work with a partner line that at the time when they're convening an activity, I'm looking for an opportunity to plan together to also be able to implement this kind of activities together. So most of the thematic areas actually that youth cafe is implementing, uh, I already have this kind of uh, thematic areas in my youth program work, uh, uh, the thematic area around governance and leadership, the entrepreneurship and skills development, the sports, the culture. So um, I'm looking at opportunity and opportunity in the partnership where we can, we can move their strategic plan forward, but also contribute my own uh, work plan as, as a source. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'd like to ask Mr. Karongo to please give us your, your um, perspective on how you think the strategic plan would lead to the advancement of the partnerships at the Youth Cafe. 
thanks Malika. And I think for me, what the, the, the launch of the strategic plan means to the partnership is that it creates more opportunities of collaboration, it creates more opportunities for us to partner together in terms of our proposals, for us to look at what are other areas can you know maybe increase our partnership. And therefore, for me, those two are very important. That the, 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 the thematic area of strategic plan gives us more opportunities for partnership and collaboration gives us more opportunities to look where we can look for funding together and also just strengthens our partnership so that if there are areas that, for example, from IREX perspective, we didn't partner with you before because we didn't feel that it was not your strength, but now within your, since it's your priority, within your strategic plan, then partnering, you know, into those uh, other areas, not only the other areas that we've partnered with you before. For me, I'm looking forward to increased partnership and collaboration and looking forward also just to seeing uh, the youth cafes, you know, looking also for other partners, you know, because you, because of those uh, priority areas in your strategic plan, it will give you more opportunities also to bring more partners. Also. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for that comment, um, Mr. Karongo. Uh, yes, we do see more concrete ways to partner with people through this strategic plan. Um, Dr. Newport, would you have something to add on to that? Yes, thank you. Um, I, I guess there's sort of two ways to see this. Um, one is uh, around um, the more in which uh, formal structures are put in place and established, those mechanisms of accountability, contract forming, budget management, all of those formalizations and developments of strategy there um, makes it easier to seek uh, international grants um, as partners um, because it speeds up the process. That was something that, again, was expedited very quickly with this project, which meant that we could really get it going very, very fast because the Youth Cafe had all of those structures in place and all steps towards um, enhancing those uh, structural uh, components of uh, the organization makes, again, grant seeking uh, easier to achieve um, and uh, allows us to work in different ways with different organizations, which is really exciting to see. Um, on a more personal level, um, obviously, my interest has been around uh, mental health and youth advancement. Um, and I think that the articulation of um, human rights and economic productivity as, as key areas of development really sit very well and importantly with mental health, uh, positive mental health on an individual level and then into the community helps produce social harmony and cohesion, uh, it supports the reduction in gender based violence and substance abuse, um, and it also leads to improved physical health outcomes. So you can really see how uh, this new focus um, on mental health that the Youth Cafe has been developing since lockdown live of last year um, is really part of this larger uh, strategic framework in terms of um, the areas of focus. Um, and I really hope that these partnerships continue and continue to broaden and develop um, as we seek to move from working with Kenya to working with uh, the broader Pan-African context. So yes, um, both on a practical uh, structural level and also um, in a kind of thematic sense, um, I, I'm really interested to see um, how uh, the next uh, the next phase um, leads to the advancement um, and, and attainment of the 2030 sustainability goals. Thank you so much for those remarks. Um, again, I thank you all for speaking with me today. Um, we hope that we will continue having strong partnerships with you and all our other partners and prospective partners. Um, I'd like to ask you all to please feel free to put your questions in the chat or comment sections on the streaming platforms. And um, I would like to request Stacy to please read out some feedback that we have on the on the chats. Okay, thank you so much, guys, for your comments. Uh, and uh, going to the chat, I can see that most of you have said that what resonates with you in our strategic plan is youth inclusion, and uh, your you know, uh, we are supportive on youth. Thank you so much for that because that is mainly our main focus. Um, we also see your comments on which other areas do you feel TYC should prioritize on? 
Uh, most of you have said mental health. This is something we have done in the past, but it's something that we are planning to emphasize on in uh, between 2021 to 2023. So thank you so much for that. We'll definitely take it into consideration. Um, I also see somebody here talking about, uh, it is important to ensure that good governance and fair ethical treatment of participants, volunteers, interns, and employees is modeled by TYC. And you know, also learn through partnerships and collaborations and then publicly promoted or shared as a positive way of running businesses and NGOs. I uh, thank you so much for that. That is something that we we'll also emphasize on in the next um, uh, three years. Uh, this is, yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, are there areas of collaboration you have ident uh, identified? Uh, we see uh, you people talking about entrepreneurship development. Yes, that is something we'd love to collaborate on. Uh, we also see community development and disease prevent preventive. Yes, thank you so much for that. We also see partnerships and collaboration with county and national government. Yes, thank you so much for that. Um, feel free to reach out to us uh, and uh, we are willing to partner with you guys. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, we'll move on to the next part. Uh, thank you so much, Stacy, for that, uh, for reading out the feedback. I can see there's so many important questions for, uh, for us on the chats. Uh, so let's just move on. And I would invite the executive director again, Mr. Onyango, to please address some of these questions and then move on to introduce our keynote speaker. Um, so Willis, uh, for you, the first question is from Mzingo Lingu, uh, is there an implementation framework or plan stating activities put in place to achieve our plan running for three years? Uh, yes, absolutely. Thanks, uh, Stacy, for that question. The, <clears throat> the plan um, is more, uh, particularly the ones we shared is public facing. So we have tried to synthesize uh, information that would be easily uh, digestible to members of the pub, uh, public, young people and the partners that we work with. Um, behind the plan is, uh, uh, the strategic plan is an, an, an implementation plan or an action plan, which now has specific uh, timelines and uh, milestone to look at as well as uh, uh, activities and deliverables to, to look at, at different moments within the period of time. Uh, so yes, and uh, we'll be uh, happy to engage uh, with you further on the implementation uh, plan that is now providing a framework for execution of the, of the strategic plan. But thank you for uh, that, that important question. Great, thank you for that, Willis. Um, my next question uh, is, as the Youth Cafe, what mechanisms are you using to curb unemployment rates among the youth? Uh, absolutely, unemployment is, uh, 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 arching issue of, uh, that also informs our work uh, in many, important ways. And within, for example, uh, focus area on education and skill building among young people, we have strategically focused on uh, building soft skills for youth that can help them to, you know, know how to work or uh, transition easily from educational institutions to the job market. Uh, so we call them 21st century skills. And um, from the experience and evidence that we've seen at our disposal is the disparity between the actual technical skills that young people acquire at institutions of higher learning. And uh, on the other hand, the actual practical skills that uh, employers would need. And some of these uh, needs to be uh, at some points elevated to be able to uh, to live up to the expectation of what employers would expect. And key among those are the uh, soft skills, working ability to work as part of a team, how to communicate, 
uh, effectively emotional intelligence. So with our partners, we have uh, prioritized this area of work in order to use this as a mechanism to increase the employability rates uh, among, 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 among young people. We know it is a very complex pro uh, problem with uh, nearly 70% uh, of, 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 of young people who uh, would be employable not uh, having access to those opportunities for employment. And as you know, in many of the societies and communities we work with, the average, uh, the average number of years that it takes a young graduate to get their first job is five years. So um, due to the factors that have been mentioned in the strategic plan, but also elsewhere. So it is a key issue uh, of, of, of our time and we are uh, summoning all the resources and the strengths that we have in order to address it uh, working together. Thank you. Thank you for answering that question. Um, another question that we have is, some of us have been equipped with skills on how to start and run business. We don't have the sources of capital. How can you handle such a scenario? Yeah, uh, access to capital, actually, a lot of particularly, we also, of course, have uh, a focus area uh, on jobs, businesses and entre entrepreneurship, since a majority of young people have resorted to uh, founding startups and uh, creating self-employment uh, instead of waiting to be, uh, to be employed since the opportunities are limited. Uh, but we, we, we also see that, uh, you know, the lack of access to easy capital or uh, affordable capital uh, or youth friendly, let's say capital, there is the uh, issues of within a traditional uh, lending setups, you have to, to produce or reduce uh, some form of security which young people do not have uh, any access to land or, 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 or these uh, resources and capital that can be used to secure loans. So, for example, we, we last the other week we just sent out a survey in order to uh, to pilot uh, a program with a leading banking institution locally aimed at uh, young entrepreneurs and uh, um, particularly in terms of accessing to levers of economic power that can help them uh, to to navigate the the the. <coughs> the startup world or the, 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 the founding generally management of, uh, of, 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 of an organization, in this case, businesses. Uh, it is a key issue, which is also a very important one. Um, uh, we also, of course, uh, understand that young people sometimes may not necessarily need only access to capital, but also other skill sets that are needed for effective uh, running and functioning of a business such as management or human resource and other broad spectrum of skills. And once these structures are, are put in place, then it would be easy uh, to, uh, to have capital full. Uh, otherwise, it is a very important uh, uh, point to raise as we also in our network have a lot of young people who actually come to us uh, with the hope of, uh, of getting startup capital um, um, so we, we, we already see this as a, as, as, as a key issue worth uh, uh, looking at and working on for, with the objective of finding a, a, a workable solution for young people. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for answering that, Willis. Um, there are so many important questions that we're getting, but due to time constraints, we can only have one last question, but um, we will be sure to, to work on answering all your questions and send them to you somehow. Um, so the final question to you, Willis, is what are some of the practical methods of addressing or improving civic accountability and good governance that the Youth Cafe has used and will use going forward? Yeah, accountability in governance is, is a key focus area of the Youth Cafe. As you, uh, you saw the video that was played in that um, uh, video partnered with uh, young artists who were uh, uh, able to compose uh, um, um, a song uh, that, you know, surfaces, amplifies the voices of young people with respect to corruption, uh, misrule, 
and um, <clears throat> malfeasance in, in our governance systems. Uh, we think that uh, corruption, for example, uh, steals away the, uh, the future practically of young people. And we advocate for uh, an era where young people can have access to opportunities in a very free and fair manner, uh, while also bearing in mind that uh, they are competent to, uh, to access these opportunities. So uh, within our broad work on governance and political inclusion, we have a raft of activities. We are currently uh, partnering with the foundation to, to run a contest for govern good governance contest where young people are submitting pieces of arts, of poems, of pictures, of, 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 of short videos that best depict not only their, 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 their outlook on, 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 on good governance, but also what they can do, what they're already doing, because we also see inspiring stories of young people, our members working in different communities to teach um, uh, on good governance. Um, um, so that is those are just a few of the activities that uh, uh, we have uh, ongoing um, and we have uh, others related to convenings, uh, workshops and, 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 and trainings and advocacy targeted at legisl legislative uh, arms of government. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for answering those questions with us. Um, I would li now like to invite you to introduce our keynote speaker, if you will, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's my singular honor to introduce uh, uh, Dr. Sherry Enns, who has vast experience in managing programs, mobilizing resources, and working on projects in several countries, including many countries in Africa, such as Kenya, Tanzania, South Sudan, Somalia, uh, and far-field India. Uh, Sherry has uh, more recently led uh, several humanitarian projects within uh, the East African region. And we are so honored to have her as our uh, chief guest today. Uh, Sherry holds uh, uh, an MA in community and regional planning and has a PhD in uh, international uh, relations. We've had uh, some past collaborations too uh, with, with Sherry and, and, and High, High University, and we hope that that will continue. Uh, Sherry is also involved in pro program management at uh, RD Regional University in Tanzania uh, and has led and uh, spearheaded the, the university's uh, Canada's internship program. And actually, we are also honored that we have received some of uh, our interns who have done, who have gone ahead to do tremendous work with the Youth Cafe. Uh, she has uh, worked on a number of projects, including housing projects, and has assisted in coordination of many international, national, and community events. Uh, uh, she, uh, she has worked on local projects too, and um, <clears throat> with a specific focus on homelessness and affordable housing, uh, as well as child and particularly youth policy. So it is now my honor to welcome uh, Sherry to give her speech. Thank you. Thank you, Willis. Thank you, Youth Cafe. It's an honor and privilege to be here this morning. Only a youth-led organization would say, um, come and be a speaker, but five minutes only. <laughs> so I will, I will be very respectful of time. I, I want to begin by saying, as someone that's worked in on projects Pan Africa in Pan well Pan Africa over since I guess 30 years or so, that it's only um, through the awareness and knowledge and inspiration of organizations such as Youth Cafe that I can truly begin to have a sense of 
a change, transformative change that, that's taking place. And in that regard, inspired by the, the tenacity, the determination, insight and wisdom of all of you that are involved with Youth Cafe. I first came to know of Youth Cafe or even before Youth Cafe. I think Willis, we met over 10 years ago. You participated in a social entrepre entrepreneur contest course training um, that I was running through UN Habitat. And in fact, you may recall, you challenged us on the winners, how we had identified the winners. And it was, it was the articulate tenacity of that challenge that made me realize, oh, oh, this is a person I want to stay connected to. This is a person who I want to watch and a person who I hope can influence any of the practice that I'm involved in. And you know, on that note, as, as I look forward and what role can a university in Canada play with respect to an organization like Youth Cafe, well, your plan clearly outlines strategic areas, but I wanna to speak to your theory of change. That document and the insight and wisdom on how you anticipate and are already influencing change should not only shape partnerships, but shape the, the direction of where leadership stands across Africa, but within the organization itself. And when I do a scan of more recent or upcoming funding opportunities, I really am hopeful that the narrative changes where, where the organization comes to Youth Cafe and say, what should we be doing? Not the funder or the donor comes and says, we have this now fit into it. And I'm, I would like to encourage you to, to work in that direction because you have the potential to really begin to shift, not just the, the direction of leadership, but also the direction of funding and potential um, change. And let's just give one example. We recently participated in a grant application related to training and the funding for the entrepreneurial activity was sourced through a new app that's been designed and developed by two youth uh, in Asia. And I, I just begin to see there's so much potential if we can take ideas plus needs and then resources and work under the leadership and direction of an organization like Youth Cafe. When you do a scan of the literature, news and media, youth have always been framed in many negative ways. We use words or people write tsunami, youth bulge, uh, and certainly we know the stats and I don't wanna underestimate the real challenges, but so much is lost by that narrative. And I would also like to encourage and inspire you to really tell your story beyond Kenya, beyond the continent, and even globally in terms of, of the way that youth can be not just agents of change, but ag um, agent of participation. So this idea that you're actively directing change and actively directing your own participation. An organization cannot have a soul, I don't think, but it can have a heart. And that heart really should be one that shines true light. And it shouldn't be a neon, brittle, um, you know, false plastic light. It should be a light that's more like the flicker and the flame of a candle, a light that, brines, that shines brightest at the core and the heart of the organization and then, and then moves beyond that. And so this morning as a non-youth, and I don't know what you call us, I wish I had another term besides old, but as a non-youth who's, who's you know, worked within this context for, for many decades, I would like to inspire the rest of the non-youth that are here or listen to humbly sit back, place our future and direction in the hands of youth and organizations such as Youth Cafe so that we can continue to support and partner in transformative, new and inspirational ways. So thank you. That's what I'd like to share this morning. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Sherry. We are so honored to have you um, here with us today and thank you so much for your kind words and your words of wisdom and if I was to if I was to be told um, if I was asked to name what you guys are called I would say you are knowledgeable mentors to us all so thank you so much for always being there to support us I am now excited to announce that our strategic plan has officially launched 
We are now confidently taking off on our journey to 2023. Godspeed. Thank you all for being here with us today. We want to hear what you all have said throughout the event. And so for that, I'd like to request Stacy again to please read the chats on this meeting and comment section for our streaming platforms. Once again, thank you so much for uh, interacting with us. And let's move to the chat box and see what you have been saying. Um, I can see a number of comments in the chat box. I'll read a few. We'll start with our latest comments, which is what Boniface Gishuhi has just said. Hi, my name is Boniface Gishuhi, and I'm the co-founder and project manager at Marafiki Green Leaders, which is a youth-led organization. Marafiki Green Leaders was formed with an aim of creating safe green spaces for the community through tree planting to create safe spaces for the community and kitchen gardening, through which repurpose used plastic where we get to keep the environment healthy and clean at the same time, create food security within the community. How can we partner? And what is the process for a partnership? Thank you so much, Marafiki Green. We love your initiative and we've dropped a link for how you can partner with us. Uh, kindly anyone who wants to partner with us, feel free to click on the link and uh, yeah, we can begin the process of partnership. I can also see Linda Aseo, the, uh, uh, the aspiring MCA in Kakamega County. Um, she's also, she also wants to partner with us. Thank you so much, Linda. We would love to be part, to partner with the county government. And uh, thank you so much for that. Kindly click on the link and we can partner at any time. Sangani Paul says the presentation was so amazing. I feel so motivated and empowered. Wow. Kindly, we would like you to give us an opportunity for internship. I'm one of the graduates from university and unemployed. Uh, thank you so much for that, Paul. We have dropped a link on how you can apply for the internship program. So feel free to do that. I uh, can also see Richard Owino, wonderful work. Keep it up. Uh, QGPA Girls Project will also do its best to partner with Youth Cafe. Thank you so much. Like I said, click on the link and uh, partner with us at any time. Uh, yes, there are links being dropped to also volunteer. You can click on the links in the chat box. Uh, yes, and uh, you can also find the links for our website in the chat box. Thank you so much for that. I can see Jessie has dropped her contacts uh, in the chat box. Thank you so much for us. For that, um, we will definitely contact you back. Um, amazing work from Thomas Kalunge. Amazing work, TYC and all those involved. I like that TYC serves as a connector of youth in Africa. I see the advocacy of putting their potentials, their skills. See you soon. Thank you so much for that. That is definitely our main focus, especially for the next three years. And uh, thank you so much for that. Yes, Kaya Edwin, thanks for the link on volunteer. You're very much welcome. We would love uh, for you to be a part of uh, our next uh, uh, three years and uh, for you to help us achieve our strategic plan. Thank you so much for coming to this meeting. I can see Tony Olela. Uh, to learn more about the Kenyan Student Magazine, click on or call. Uh, he's put his uh, website, www didzo.co.ke and he's also put his telephone number. We'll definitely partner with you. And uh, I believe uh, there are definitely more people that would want to partner with you here. Uh, thank you so much for putting that out there, Tony. Um, I can also see Wilson. Your interventions are very vital. I believe we have youth-led organizations such as yours in all the countries in Africa will have a great impact on the lives of young people. Yes, our main focus is ensuring that young people lead quality lives. And uh, we hope that uh, through us, many, many people will see, we, we'll, serve an, as, as, sorry, we'll serve an, as an example to many people and uh, more youth organizations will keep coming up throughout Africa. Thank you so much for that. Um, yes, we have a number of comments here. Kaya yeah. Edwin, once again, outside here. Yes, uh, I think I read that comment. Thank you so much for that, guys. Keep uh, keep the comments coming. 
I can see other youth organizations to realize their intervention areas. We can definitely talk about this further. Wilson, kindly reach out to us. Uh, Bonface Gishuhi, for anyone who wants to partner with Marafiki Green Leaders, you can email us. So Marafiki Green Leaders have uh, posted their their email address and their contact in the chat box. So anyone else that wants to partner with Marafiki Green Leaders, kindly feel free. We we are we are quite happy to connect uh, you guys together. We are, I'm also seeing Edwin once again, looking forward to be a part of the, uh, the strategic plan in the spirit to enrich the lives of young people in the continent. Thank you so much for that uh, kind compliment, Edwin. Yes, um, keep, uh, feel free to, to add your comments. And uh, with that said, thank you so much for joining us today and um, have a great day, guys. Uh, that's great stuff. Thank you so much, Stacy, for reading those out. Once again, you know, you guys can go on our website, contact us, even if you want to have a chat. Um, you can follow our, us on our socials on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and even YouTube. Um, so once again, I want to thank all of our partners and esteemed guests who joined us in celebrating this milestone, the launch of our strategic plan for the years 2021 to 2023. Now, before we end this event, uh, we would like to capture this remarkable moment. I would like to request all of you to please turn on your cameras so we can take a group photo. I will count down to three and then we can all just give us our favorite smiles, like our, the best smiles that you can give. We'll go into the gallery view and we will have someone who will take our pictures. So, uh, yes, I can see all your beautiful faces. Wow, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Yay. Great. All right. So someone uh, will be taking the picture, I'm sure. OK. Is everyone ready? So we've got three, two, one. Smile. Great. I'm assuming the picture has been taken. Thank you all so much. Thank you all once again for your invaluable support and contributions throughout this event. We look forward to working with you in the future, but until then, goodbye and have a fantastic day.